On today's episode, what is the most efficient processes and workflows to work with developers when you're doing your design for digital products and websites? Hey everybody, what's up and welcome to another episode of Designer Mind where I share some of my insights and the way that I work when I'm doing my design job. And today I'll be talking about the workflows that I use when working on developers. And I think we can divide this episode into two um, designing products, which is apps like web apps or mobile apps and designing websites, which are more like maybe marketing websites or blogs and these type of websites. I feel like these are two different types of elements and even require different types of developers when you're working with. So um, let's get started with talking about designing digital product, which is the more complicated one. So basically, my process today is I'm starting to get my design work on Sketch. I do my design work on Sketch and then I transfer it using the um, Envision Craft plugin. I transfer that into Envision and then I share the Envision in spec with the developer. So it looks something like this. So if this is a design for a web product that I'm working on, then uh, the developer will be able to go into the inspect mode and actually see the sizes, the text, the fonts that I'm using, and even download the resources from, from here. Now this, um, Envision Inspect and tools like Zeppelin really transformed the way that we worked a few years ago when we actually literally had to chop and export each one of the assets and, and create kind of like spec docs with all the spacing and everything. So these type of tools save me a lot, a lot of time but it should be said they are not perfect. And the main thing about them is that they don't really tell the developer how these elements should react in real responsive setting. So this is kind of just like a static design and it doesn't really tell the developer should this button you know, scale when the screen is bigger or should it stay fixed in size? Should it stick to the bottom or should it be centered? So these type of elements right now are not being conveyed and there is actually no um, no alternative but to sit down before you actually send this thing to the developer and review the design together and explain him here's what I'm thinking about also these type of uh, design tools don't show many things like states hover states and so you, there's a lot of explaining that you have to do currently or separate docs that you have to create for different states um, because these um, these tools are for static design and they're not showing the real interactive situations. So what I usually do is I'll have this conversation first where I go over the design, I explain to the developer what I thought, what I meant, how I'm thinking that this should react. Also get feedback because sometimes they have a good impact on you know telling me why would a design work or not work for a specific technical reason. So it's always good to kind of brainstorm and review the design with the developers that's going to be implementing it. Once it's done, once um, they think that it's clear, I can send them the Envision Inspect so they can actually get to work on it. Now, because as I said, this is not like fully uh, responsive and this is not real code, they actually have to rewrite all the code. And one tool that recently we've been using is Storybook, which is kind of like, um, it allows them to put all the UI into components and just really create components and the code is here. So I can review and see that each component is actually looks and interacts the way that um, you know I want it to. Now, my pain here at the moment is that I as a designer don't have access to change the code in the storybook and in the actual production code when the app is developed. So that is pretty frustrating and this is why I'm pretty excited about tools that will allow designers to actually create and manipulate the code. I was pretty excited about Framer X, but that didn't really allow me to do the handoff, only manipulate existing code. Uh, I just reviewed the Supernova Studio, which is a good step on the way um, there, I think, to, to allow designers to actually export the code, but maybe somewhere where there is actually a real source of truth where either it's on GitHub or something will allow me as a designer the tools to manipulate how the UI looks like. That's, I think that's the actual future of product design, but we're not there at the moment. So right now I'm gonna have to use this combination of tools alongside real discussion and talk to, and to make sure that everything is clear when I'm doing the handoff. 
So this is around product design, which as I said, it's a bit more complicated. Nowadays, when I'm doing website design, it's usually much, much easier. So personally, you might be knowing if you're following this channel, I love to use Webflow for most of the website that I'm doing. And a lot of them actually uh, remove the requirements for a front end developer at all. So I can just, you know, create the website and host it. If it's not a complicated website, if we don't need like a, a like complex backend, I can just host it myself. And sometimes there is no developer needed at all. Sometimes when you want to host on a different platform, if you want to host with WordPress or take it somewhere else to to adjust it, Webflow allows you to export the code. So I can just export the code, including the CSS, Java and all the images and all the assets and just deliver that to developers. And I've done that multiple times. And I found out that, you know, from my experience, designer uh, developers actually really love of the code that Webflow um, gets them because it's clean, it's not bloated, and it's really, really good. The other way that I work with developers around that is actually having developers help me create custom code for my Webflow website, because sometimes I want to extend, you know, the capabilities of Webflow or create features that they don't have at the moment. And I've done that multiple times in kind of extending mostly around, you know, how the CMS and, and the data manipulation works around that. And th that's also super simple. So um, I'll just bring in a, a developer sit with him together on the computer and get here into my Webflow. And there is just an a, a possibility here to add the custom code. And what we did is uh, obviously a lot of developers don't know natively, you know, Webflow or how it works. Um, so we'll just, you know, publish the website. They'll kind of in, uh, do inspect uh, inspect code to see how, you know, maybe Webflow is, is naming certain, you know, divs and, and elements, how they're named. And then they'll come back into here and just um, put in the, the relevant code to manipulate it. Maybe they want to hide some things. Maybe they want to rearrange some things. And uh, that's usually what we did around, you know, nesting collections and, and extending, as I said, the uh, abilities of the CMS. So in that case, usually from my experience, it was best to just sit together with the developer on the website, show him exactly what I need, extend it, and he'll add the custom code into the website. And uh, yeah, basically that's it. So as I said, like st static websites today, or not even static, even dynamic websites with, you know, like e-commerce or blogs are much more easy for me because, you know, I can own the whole process, more of the process rather than when product design, I'm still have to deliver even most of the front end, uh, which I think, you know, is a shame. But I think that, as I said previously, tools and, and the processes are going that way in a, in a place where I think designers will own much more of the front end of the process uh, in terms of how things look, react, hover interaction states and all that type of things. But as of now, as of 2019, these are the processes and workflows that I use. Would love to hear from you what works for you. Do you know any tool or process that I don't know? Love to hear in the comments. I'll see you next time.